Welcome to Ask the Tech Coach, brought to you by the TeacherCast Educational Network. If you are in charge of professional development and looking to build an innovative digital learning experience, this is the podcast for you. Join us each week as we uncover strategies that tech coaches are using to drive their digital transformations one classroom at a time. And now for your host, with over two decades of experience working with tech coaches and ed tech companies from all around the world, Jeff Bradbury. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Teacher Cast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making Teacher Cast your home for professional development. This is Ask the Tech Coach podcast, episode number 185. Today, we are asking, well, we're asking a very simple question, one that I've been asking myself for the last about 10 months or so. How do you create a successful instructional coaching program that impacts student achievement in the classroom. About 10 months ago, I set off on a journey for my administrator certificate. And in the middle of all of this, there was an internship project, something that all everybody in Connecticut needs to do to get their 092 or their admin cert. And I am so excited that as I'm recording this today, it is absolutely the day that I have turned my project in. And today, We're going to celebrate that together as instructional coaches, and we're going to talk all about it, what it means to you, all the different resources that are now available openly on TeacherCast. And with me, as always, to celebrate, my good friend and co-host, Sue Vincent. How are you today? Welcome to Ask the Tech Coach. I am great, and huge congratulations to you, and we'll talk more about your great accomplishment. We're going to do that a lot, because I am so excited about this, you know, uh, we're very close. I don't have the admin cert yet. I still have a, as, as we're recording this, I still have a school improvement plan to create. And I have a an, a, an administrator's test to take. We'll be looking at that in a few weeks here. But uh, you know what? To get this project off of my back, it's a big accomplishment. And yeah. I know that I'm not the only one out there doing these kinds of things. If you are an instructional coach out there and you've completed your admin degree or working towards your admin degree, I would love to hear from you. You can, of course, reach out to us over at askthetechcoach.com. Find us on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach, or even, you know, head on over to TeacherCast and say hello. We would love to hear from you. We would even love to have you on a show because many, you know, instructional coaches, you know, you get out of the classroom because you want to do more. And for many instructional coaches, I don't know if I'm in this position or not, but, you know, there is a stepping stone to becoming an admin or a district leader or a district instructor, you know, whatever that happens to be. I don't know what my future is going to be, Sue, but I just know that one of those big steps was getting certified and I'm almost there. Wait, one more time. Yay. And so, Sue, today, let's kind of walk through this whole process here. Yes. Over the last few months, we've been diving into this little uh these little steps, right? We're going to kind of backtrack a few things. And I want to let everybody know before we dive into the show here that everything we're talking about is going to be on TeacherCast. Everything is available. Everything is free to look at. Most of these topics I have full blog posts for. I might even have podcasts for. I might even have videos, giveaways. And, you know, even though, Sue, I said that we're finished... I'm really just getting started with this. You know, the whole concept for this project was to ask myself the question, how do you create an instructional coaching program? That was a biggie. That's a journey that I've been on twice now in two different school districts. But my district this year challenged me and had me answer the question that how do you know if your coaching program is impacting students? Right. It's one thing to have coaches. It's one thing to put coaches in school buildings. It's one thing to build many coaches in a school district. But how do you really know that you're having an impact on the students? So let's talk about that today. Yes. What a huge undertaking you've uh, taken on here. And it's just neat to come back and look through all this as we've been talking through the last several weeks on the, like you said, the different small topics. And I'm done with it. (laughs) Okay, that's getting fun, but it is a big weight off my plate here. So let's look at this because... We're going to break today's show down into a few different parts. What is an instructional coach? 
how do you bring in an instructional coach? How do you take one instructional coach, bring them into a department, build that department? How do you create a digital learning platform? How do you create a digital learning plan? What do you do? How do you identify what the role of those coaches are? And then really, what do you do once you unleash them onto the district? And, and again, the most important thing is how do you know that they're being impactful with students? And so, Sue, where do you want to start with all of this stuff? Well, you know, there's that framework that we talked about. So we talked um, at the very beginning of your project, laying down those four pillars of um, the instructional coaching program. So what did you do to come up with all that? How did, how did that come together for you as you began this whole endeavor? You know, I started putting this program together really eight years ago in my previous district. I started talking about these kinds of concepts, started presenting them at ISTE, um, uh, MeTex, and EdCamps, and other kinds of programs. But in order to do something like this, I needed to simplify it. And one of the things I would suggest to any coach out there is it's always easier than you think. Sometimes it's, always, it's often easier than you plan. And so for me, I took all of these concepts, put them into a great big, huge mind map program and figured out where everything goes. I, I kind of like using mind maps for these bigger projects. But then I condensed all that mind map stuff down into four things. Instructional frameworks, your ed tech integration plan, supporting your staff members, and finally, community engagement. Now, the one thing about all that is none of that matters if you don't have the right people. So the first thing that we did this year was we really defined what is an instructional coach, right? And, and we know an instructional coach, Sue, is somebody who really, really good with curriculum, right? And that's, that might not have been the first answer on everybody's tongue. They might have said, oh, somebody who's good with technology. But it really is somebody who has a solid framework in their mind and in their blood of, of curriculum, knowing how to take those, those lesson plans, knowing how to take um, the content that is there, the standards, and how do you then mold and do something with that? Exactly. And, you know, being able to work with the administration and identifying, like you said, those perfect candidates. And then after you've identified who those people are, then comes the mission and vision of what are you going to do? You get that team together. Now what? Exactly. And when we're looking at this as a mission and vision, you know, one of the things that I look at is not only the role of your instructional coach, how is your instructional coach being defined? How do you know what those benchmarks are for being an instructional coach in your district? But really asking yourself, you know, what is the goal of this organization? Is it just to get somebody to use a Google Doc or is it somebody to getting somebody to learn how to enhance their curriculum through digital learning skills? And those are vocab words I've been really leaning on this year as I go through my role in elementary school and especially around the district is I'm not here to teach you tech. I'm here to teach you how to enhance your curricular activities through, there's that word, through the use of digital learning skills, digital learning applications. If you're not doing that, you are just a tech coach. Exactly. It's all about the strategies that you're using, the pedagogical approaches, and not the one tool that the district may or may not be focused on. Hopefully they're focused on the overall vision of what they want the kids to ultimately learn. And when we talk about vision... When we talk about strategies, we have to, as a district, come up with a agreed upon framework. And you've got a few. And on TeacherCast, I've, I've linked out to the biggies here. So SAMR is certainly a biggie. The four C's or the six C's or the nine C's or <laughs> something like that. Um, TPAC is another popular one. And then the Tim tool, the technology integration metrics. And for me, I always have those four C's in mind, but I look at the four C's more as a long-term where I look at SAMR as a short-term. Mm -hmm. 
And yes. and what I mean by that is let's say that I'm your coach and I'm working with you, Sue. I know I'm going to work with you hopefully five or six times throughout the year. Maybe the first time we work together is just let's get a baseline. Maybe the second time we work together, I'm going to do a collaboration kind of thing where I'm going to maybe help you and encourage you to create a lesson where the kids are talking together, lots of discourse, right? And then maybe the next time we get together, we're going to do some kind of collaborative thinking kind of a thing, right? So the four C's or six C's or whatever, I look at that more as the throughout the course of a year, how can I bring these concepts and these different styles of lessons into you? Whereas with Samer, you know, you might come to me and say, hey, I've got this writing component. What can I do with it? And ah, right, we're going to make it into a slide deck or an audio or a podcast yes. or a video. That's more of the day to day micro thing. Am I does that make sense? Am I saying that right? Yes, very much. And that's kind of always how I've thought of it. Samer being what you're doing or what your product might be, but the four C's or the C's, you're more your approach and how you're going to get them to that product. So it's important that your district kind of, how do I put it? You know, we said the word agree, but really promote, right? Yes. If you're the coach and you're the one saying, Sammers, 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 well, that doesn't mean anything. Right. So really everything that we're talking here has to have administrative buy in. It has to have, you know, somebody up on top holding those tablets saying this is the way that we're going to walk the walk. Absolutely. A and that's with anything. In absolutely. Education, a coach, especially coaching. A coach can't do it on their own. Cannot do this on their own. They have to be the ones supporting the vision. They have to be the one supporting the vision. They might be behind the scenes helping to create the vision, but at the beginning of the day, it's got to be the leader's vision that the teachers and stuff are following. Exactly. Very so, nice. so many times we talk about this and it's the other way around where it's the coach is trying to lead from the back of the classroom. And you know what? You get stuck. And what happens when you get stuck? You might not have anywhere to turn. You might not know where to go. And that is why we have not just one, Sue, but we have two amazing instructional coaching networks. You can head on over to askthetechcoach.com and you can check out all the great links. You can, of course, join our Facebook group. We just hit over 400 instructional coaches. Uh, we're doing live shows once or twice a month. And... We'd love to have you guys. If you're out there listening and are looking for a great group to join, you can always come on over to our Facebook group. Or if you're looking for something a little bit more professional, not that Facebook isn't professional, but we do have a LinkedIn group that we're trying to grow. we got over 100 coaches in there right now, and we are looking to grow both of those no matter what the platform is. We have an amazing instructional coaches group for you, and we are here to provide you with hugs and resources and more hugs and some free supplies and more hugs, and you never know when you're going to just need somebody to turn to because after all, so as we say all the time, we're not in this alone. We're all in this not together. Absolutely. But how do you do it? Right. The one word you've probably heard me say on 185 podcasts here is in ed tech instructional plan, ed tech integration plan, educational technology, strategic plan, whatever the words are, we need to have a roadmap. We need to have something that says, how we're going to get to the end of the line. How do, we, how do we get to what our vision is of digital learning? How do we take our school strategic plan and meet the needs of that? And Sue, we've been talking about this a lot this year, haven't we? Oh, very much. I mean, as a district, we need to get that vision, but then we have to have a roadmap as to how to get there. And again, as an instructional coach, you're the one that is going to carry out and support that plan in getting the teachers where they need to go. And there's so many components within that. And the first one I would call my district snapshot. And that could be your strategic plan, right? That's where a bunch of people get together. And I mean, people, I, I don't mean what this isn't, the, you know, very clear here. This is not the instructional coaches project. This is 
the district is going to put this together. But you got to stop and take a look at yourself. Where are you? Where have you been? Where you're, you know, um, what are you made up of? How are you currently learning? What does digital learning look like? Looking at all of the observations, are there digital learning components? Taking a snapshot of where you are right now. The next step, of course, is where do you want to be? Figuring out, okay, what is that goal by the end of the journey? What do we want to see when we get there? It is kind of like putting your mission and your vision and stuff out there. We then go to step three, drafting an essential question. And that's not easy to do, right? Most people look at this essential question and they're like, I don't know. And for many school districts, maybe you don't know yet. But for me, an essential question could be something like, how do we create a technology integration plan that excites teachers to want to bring new and innovative lessons and activities into their classrooms? And I've been saying this, Sue, for a while now, and just always going back to this concept. How do we create a plan that excites teachers to want to try something new? It doesn't say they're going to be experts. This is not saying everyone's going to be a Google, Microsoft certified, whatever. Right. Not All we're doing is saying, yeah. how do we create a, a culture where people feel comfortable trying something new in the classroom? And think of that essential question as your guide. I love how um, Jeff put it in the blog post that goes with this whole part of the project of creating that North star, just like the North star in the sky guides um with light if you're out on a journey um that's what your essential question should be it's what's going to guide you through the year and in turn motivating those teachers to be excited another example that i have on the blog post is how can we create innovative and engaging learning environments that focus on authentic student activities and achievements and even with that one, how do you create a, a, innovative and learning environments? This is a facilities question, right? How do we create a yeah. classroom where teachers feel like they are able to do amazing things with their students that focus on real world, authentic learning engagements? Notice none of these essential questions are how do I make my teacher more gooder at Google? Thanks. Absolutely. That is not the idea. The idea here is. I want to be able to create an engaging learning environment and build a culture that excites teachers to want to try something new. But how do we do that? We first have to identify where teachers are. And for that, we talk all about our needs assessments. And I don't want to go too far into this one, Sue, because we did a nice long podcast yes. a few weeks ago about this, but having that needs assessment is extremely important for the next step of creating professional development for the individual teacher. We've all been in professional development days where you look around and you go, all right, I'm in the wrong room. Everybody here is at a level two and I'm at a level seven or everybody else has been, completely introduced to this and I might be able to teach this class. Like how do we put our teachers in the right space so that way they are feeling engaged and they're not sitting at a PD session, you know, grading papers or checking their Absolutely. text messages, right? How do we create all of that? Well, the answer is simple. Step six is we build a roadmap. We build a roadmap that's going to allow us to have individual Small, medium size, you know, department meetings, uh, grade level meetings, building level meetings, district level meetings, virtual meetings. What is that professional development roadmap? We then take a look and say, if we're building that roadmap, what are we teaching? And that's where we come up with our ed tech menu of saying, here's the high essential programs that we have to teach our, our student information system, our grading, a Google or classroom, a Microsoft Teams, a something like that. And then we figure out what those lesson plans are. So there's a lot of information to unpack and all of that stuff. But, you know, this is stuff that I do. This is stuff that you do. This is stuff that any coach should do is saying, all right, what do I know I have to teach this year? Let's build those slide decks and let's build those lesson plans. So that way, if somebody says, I need something, it's ready to go. 
Yeah, I love the conversations you and I were able to have as you were formulating all of this and getting it together. And um, you have a team and I, I have a smaller team of colleagues, but just getting all of us talking about getting all of us on the same page, you know, not necessarily using the same wording, but teaching the same thing and knowing what we want, where we want our teachers to be at the end of the road. So those were some great conversations as uh, Jeff was putting this project together. And so I'll give you a good example of why this is important. Last Monday, seven o'clock at night, I got a phone call from one of our district level administrators and, you know, hey, how you doing? He says, what are you doing tomorrow morning? I said, um, what do you need? He says, can you show up to district office at nine o'clock? I want you to do spreadsheet training for all of our office staff. <laughs> Great, because I already had the lessons. I already knew what I needed to do. I already had a roadmap. Now, granted, I've taught spreadsheets before at, at ed camps and, and I've done, you know, office worker training in right. previous districts and stuff. So I've had that. And that's exactly why I'm passionate about making sure that every instructional coach has those, you know, back pocket things where if you're going to teach off a slide deck, great. There it is. Google Classroom 101. If you're going to just teach off the top of your head, you still need some kind of a lesson plan that says step one, step two, step three. And so there I was nine o'clock. All these office people come on in. We open up a Google sheet. I share it with everybody. Everybody gets a new tab. And so as I'm demonstrating on the first tab, they're building it on their inner tabs. And now they're understanding sharing and hyperlinking. And we had an amazing two and a half hour session. It was awesome. That is great. And having that lesson plan, you know, as a coach, we think, oh, we don't have to do lesson plans anymore. But mm -mm. we have to remember that is so important. As a coach, going in to train a teacher is just as important having that lesson plan in our back pocket as it is the teacher in that classroom to teach those students. Because if we go in without any plan whatsoever, that's when our PD sessions usually flop. And it's okay not to use that plan. You know, I, yeah, I, I walked into uh, to that session basically saying, you know, what do you know? And I was told ahead of time, start at this is a column, this is a row, this is a cell. And I said to everybody, we're going to start with zero as if you were my eight-year-olds. And we built up from there. And in two and a half hours, we were doing functions and formulas and charts and graphs and embedding charts onto Google Slides. And uh, we, we had a great time. How do, you, how do we get Jeff to come back, right? And, and really, if we're looking at our instructional coaching program as a marketing opportunity, we're always marketing, whether it be let me come back and do forms training so we can do forms into spreadsheets, oh, into slides, into sh right? Or how do I come back into your classroom the next day? Or how do I get the principal to say, yeah, he is really good or she is really good. You got to get him in your class. It's all about marketing. Absolutely. Every day, every hour. Every day, every hour. The next step in our roadmap is about incentivizing professional development. And if you have not had a chance to hear that show, highly recommend it. We had three uh, instructional coaches on from all across North America talking yes. about how they are incentivizing their PD. And then the last three steps of the tech integration plan roadmap is really how do you put this whole thing together? And if you check out those blog posts, we have templates, we have examples, we have free downloads things that you can use to guide you in putting this whole process together. And, you know, really, if we're looking at this, you know, this whole process might take six months to eight months to maybe a full school year to put together. Yes. And that's okay. Yeah. Take your time and do it right. And you will be more successful in the long run. If you have any questions about this, please reach out to us. We would love to hear from you over at askthetechcoach.com. Join our instructional coaches network. We're going to be talking a lot about this over the next few weeks, probably even going to be doing a live uh, show on it to dive into all of these things because I know there's districts out there probably like yours that are saying, how do I define or in some cases, redefine what an instructional coach is. And Sue, I always start with trying to define where the instructional coach is on the family tree. So the next part of my project was really to ask the self, how do we support our instructional coaches? What is the relationship between 
a coach and a student. I know coaches that spend a lot of their time doing student training, working with students. And where there's nothing wrong with that, a coach by definition teaches teachers, not teaches students. So it's okay to work with students, but you got to get yourself to the adult in the room at some point, right? Absolutely. And you know, my team and I were having this very conversation last week. And, you know, yes, it's March of this school year, but as we talk about next school year, as it is on the horizon of what is our approach and where should we be and where is our visibility? And we had that very conversation. And I even alluded to them um, the episode that Jeff and I really delved into this and where we talked about working with the teachers. And that's hard. So many times you work with teachers and they say, great, you're here. There's a student that needs you. Or great, you're here. You go teach we video. Uh, no, it's you know we need to define this. So what is the what is the relationship between the teacher and the between the coach and the student? What is the relationship between the coach and the teacher? Right, and there's got to be a mentorship. There's got to be a, a a relationship going in there. One of the, I think the strongest relationships and. I keep going back to this is why Sue and I work so well together. You have to have a great relationship between the coach and the library media specialist. These are your allies if you're out there because oh, yes. these are the ones that are that are teaching the digital learning skills. These are the ones that know every teacher, see every teacher. Um, you know, they interact with every single student. You know, my LMS and I are so close and I love working with the guy. And, and you know, our success as a as a building is based a lot off of the relationship that we have together in making sure that everybody is kind of put in place together. Yeah, they're definitely a good ally. And I'm not saying that because I used to be one of them, but but they are a awesome supportive person. I, I'm yeah. saying it because you used to be one of them. So relationships right the yeah, question that i've also been asking in my district and i would ask anybody in their district what is the relationship between you as a coach and your techs your building techs your central office techs and if the answer is something like we're brother and sister okay that works smaller districts work like you know you have a coach and a, and a tech and they've got the same boss right so that that's a brother sister thing um in a bigger district you might have a coach and a coaching boss and then you have a tech and a tech boss and then those two uppers go into one person so you'd be cousins and it's important to kind of know where those things are because a lot of times the tech might need the coach to do some things or the coach might need the tech to come in and follow them around and say, hey, let's fix this, do this. And, you know, you might have a situation where each person needs to use the other's skills and hands and, 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 uh, and abilities to support the building, to support classrooms, and ultimately to support teachers and students. Right, because many times as a coach, you're not going to be able to do your job if those techs aren't either – going before you or following behind you to get the hardware and inner inner excuse me the interface in place to make that happen and you know i have to say jeff's two examples there i've been in both situations and um, have been blessed and lucky to have had good relationships in both in both areas I think that's a new uh, hashtag for us. Is your interface in place? <laughs> there we go. We're going to make sure we have all of that stuff. You know, the other two relationships that we talk about, and we'll, we'll, we don't need to go into detail here, Sue, but what is the relationship with your building administrator? You know, for many coaches, the building administrator is your boss. Um, for some, it's not your boss. You report to a district office level person. You are assigned to a school. That's a completely different relationship than every coach has a principal and every principal is using a coach completely different in the course of a school district. That sometimes leads to problems, mm -hmm. right? If you've got multiple coaches in a district and they're all being used completely different, um, enough said on that right then maybe you need to go back up there to that step and look at your district uh, then you need to figure account. out how that all works so you know 
making sure that we have internal relationships defined, figured out, promoted, I think is important. But the next part of my project was really about how can we use instructional coaches on the district, not just in the district, but on the district. So we talked a lot about how do you create professional daytime uh, or daytime professional development programs. We talked about how do you use your coaches to support new teachers as they're coming in and asking new teachers, you know, office workers, administrators. How do you use them for new employee orientation? How do you use your instructional coaches for things like your parent universities? And one of the things that I'm so proud of, and I, I, we're going to do a show on this soon, I just don't know when, but we're going to talk all about student tech teams. And that's really one of those things that in my district are starting to take off. And we're having a lot of great discussions. And I'm looking forward to bringing that into um, into this podcast here to talk about how to do all that stuff. So what are other ways that instructional coaches can be used on a school district? Well, you mentioned the parent university, but just being out there in the, well, the community too. I mean, one thing I try to do is we have a Facebook group for our parents and community support system. We started it back when COVID began and it's still going strong where the parents are asking questions. And there's times where I'm able to step in and answer something because they're having this trouble with canvas over here and i'm able to lend a hand so so that's been huge for us just to get out there into the stakeholders of the community we've gone through an entire program here and we haven't really asked the question or answered the question i should say but is this affecting change in the classroom and that's been the hardest part about this entire program project sue right because yes. again we can we can find the best coaches we can train the best applications we can put together a structure and we can define who's a brother and a sister and a cousin and a, you know who's been once removed from everybody else but sue how do you know if you're being effective how do you know if your dollars are in the right spot how do you know if you're going through this whole entire process and is it moving the needle how, what do you how, how do you know sue I mean, there's so many different ways, you know, if you're a data keeper, keep that data. But just, again, back to relationships with those teachers. Are, are the teachers feeling motivated? Are they, you know, giving you good reports? Is the building administrator satisfied with what you're doing? Having those constant conversations and standing meetings to talk about that. And is the vision of the district being carried out effectively? I agree. My answer for this is you can't look at the short term. Yes. In my previous district, I was there for four years and you really didn't see much proof. You could see a little. I'm not going to knock what I did, but you really didn't see much proof of me being there in the first year. You're there. You're meeting people, you're getting your feet wet, you're doing meetings, you're planning, you're, you're kind of digging yourself in and seeing where you are. But by the time I got to my third year, you turn around and you realize that the teachers that you're working with in those particular grades, and even though I was K-12, I was focusing more on the six through nine. So you got middle school, high school, right? Those, mm -hmm. those important years. It was getting easier, the teachers that I worked with were suddenly asking me higher level questions. By the time the kids were in ninth grade, I had already had them since seventh grade, sixth grade. So the ninth grade teachers were not asking me level one type questions. They were asking me level three type questions because those kids I had been working with, with their teachers for three, sometimes four years. And you have to look at this instructional coaching program and say, it is an investment. Absolutely. Now, now that's not good. Uh, yeah. And if you're one of those first year coaches out there and you're thinking, I'm not seeing any results. Listen to what Jeff just said after his first year, take time, give it time and watch it grow through the years and, and you'll feel better and better as the years go by. One of the things that I learned again this year is the concept of don't press. You can't look to the yes. left and to the right and see your other coaching friends doing amazing things and say, why not me? 
you're given the culture of your building. You're given the culture of your administration. You're given the culture of your teachers. You're given the culture of your teachers union. You're given the culture of the pandemic. You're giving all these other things and you're told to do your stuff. And if you're saying sitting here after a year, even maybe two years, and you're saying, am I making a difference? Sometimes it's not the time to do that, right? You can always look around and say, well, Mrs. Jones is doing this project. I did a good job with her. But is that affecting the kids? And the only real way to do that is you look after year after year after year and saying, okay, if I work really, really hard on video in fourth grade, Next year in fifth grade, I should be able to walk into those teachers and say, let's do live broadcasting or let's do more, let's do deeper level editing. Whereas maybe, you know, fourth grade, you're doing a flip grid, fifth grade, maybe you're doing a wee video because they get the concept of doing that. Maybe they get the concept of making presentations. Maybe they get the, you know, all those different things. You have to remember that instructional coaching is a macro sport. You have to look at this in the long run have that vision and just keep that vision in front of you and don't look back as much. Just keep moving forward. I am so excited today to share that this project is turned in behind me. And I am so excited to be sharing this project with you. We are going to be putting this on our sidebars on teacher cast. It's certainly going to be one of our menu items. Check it out. It is just the beginning. Um, also on this page, I've got an entire roadmap for how do you make a transition into a Microsoft 365. I'm going to be adding on to that over the next few months, probably mostly over the summertime of how do you transition into Google. Um, over the next few months, we're going to be adding a lot more video tutorials. Uh, be honest, Sue, you know, we've talked about this. I've kind of had to scale back a lot of the YouTube stuff that we've been doing. Right. Um, because we've had projects to do and, you know, grad school and homework and stuff like that. But now that these projects are starting to go down, stick with us. We got a lot of great things happening over here on the teacher cast instructional coaches network. And Sue, I just want to say publicly, thanks for sticking along with this. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the next few weeks here on ask the tech coach. It's been a fun journey and it continues to be a fun journey. We have some great shows coming up over the next few weeks. We have an amazing guest coming back on from a company called Tract, uh, sharing some of the great things that Tract can do for you in the classroom. Don't want to miss all of that. And, you know, we're going to be doing our live shows coming up soon. We'll be making sure that you have all that. So check out everything over on Ask the Tech Coach and let us know that you guys are out there by joining our Instructional Coaches Network. We just hit 400 coaches and we would love to hit 600 as our next major milestone. Sue, what are you going to be doing this week over on Tech Imaginations? Well, I had a Tech Tip Tuesday come out this past week on the awesome new feature. Thank you, Google, and thank you, Google Classroom. We can now schedule across multiple classes. It's Whoa. awesome. Check out that video tutorial. I finally got it in my account. So that tutorial is over on Check Imaginations, as well as some other keyboard shortcut stuff. And um, one of my new favorite apps called Note, K-N-O-W-T. So go check that out. Go check that out. That is pretty awesome. And again, don't forget to head on over to teachercast.net. Lots of great stuff in there. And we want to say thank you guys for checking out episode number 185 of Ask the Tech Coach. On behalf of Sue and everybody here in the TeacherCast Educational Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you guys to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students. You've been listening to Ask the Tech Coach, hosted by Jeff Bradbury of the TeacherCast Educational Network. Please reach out to the show with all of your questions on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach or online at www.askthetechcoach.com. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And please take a moment to write a review in the App Store.